Hey everyone, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be doing a book unhaul. So this has been a long time coming. I accumulate more books than I read or I guess I don't read quick enough for the amount of books that I keep bringing in. So as much as I have tried to eliminate my book buying and I've done decent, not this whole year as a whole, but the past couple of months, but mostly that's just been because I've realized I'm too busy to read very much right now, even though I seem to be reading a lot. I guess like, it just depends on what kind of reader you are. Like I'm reading a lot, but a lot of it's like middle grade and graphic novels. So I need to get rid of some of my books, long story short. So I have 32 books that I'm gonna show you guys today. I know some of these are gonna be controversial and some people are gonna be like, no, you need to keep that and read that. And if you think that I should keep it and read it, let me know. But I'm not gonna guarantee you that I will because it was already really heart wrenching to go through my shelves. Um, the shelves behind me are my like TBR shelves and this needs to be my red shelf, not my TBR shelf. So I have all of these books that I have not yet read. And I had to narrow it down. There are just some books that I'm simply not interested in reading anymore. There are books that I read that I didn't like. There are books that I read that I liked okay, but I just don't really think I'll read again and I don't want to own anymore. Um, and so yeah, that's what we're gonna go through today. I do have another box of books as well, but they are more or less books that were given to me because people know I like to take my books to McKay's used bookstore to trade them in for store credit and so People just so kindly donate books to me so that I may do that. Um, so I don't really have anything to say about those books. So we're just gonna leave them to the side and I'm just going to talk about the 32 books that I have pulled from my shelves that I am going to be trading in for store credit, hopefully over the next couple of months. So the first book that I'm going to be unhauling is Flame in the Mist by Renee Ivier. And so let me just go ahead and tell you a lot of the books on this list are going to be young adult fantasy. When I first started booktube and bookstagram and when I first started watching booktube, I was watching a lot of people that talked about young adult fantasy and I was basically just trying to get my hands on any book that anybody was talking about. And some of the books didn't really sound interesting to me or like maybe something that I would typically gravitate towards, but I thought that I would want to give it a try anyways just to see. This was one of those, and I actually believe my husband got me this for Christmas one year, so he already knows that some of these books he gave me for Christmas, and I'm going to unhaul them, but this one I don't know really anything about, except um, I think it's about like a samurai, maybe this is not the samurai one, but yeah, this one is the samurai one, so I, I don't know, like I've never really been intrigued by samurai stories, now I will say the last samurai, the movie, is phenomenal, if you've not seen it, I highly recommend it, but Ultimately, like I'm not gonna go into detail and all this, I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible. I just don't, I'm not interested in this anymore. I'm not super interested in a lot of young adult fantasy anymore, unless it's like witchy, I guess. So this just doesn't pique my interest anymore. Um, I'm sure it's good, but I've got to narrow down my shelves. So we're gonna get rid of this one. Then I have Thornhill by Pam Sma. Y'all. I don't know what to say because I'm gonna offend somebody, but like, I hated this book. I really hated this book. Um, there was a girl that I went to college with that picked this book up and when she picked it up, I looked at it. I was like, oh my gosh, this looks so interesting. I need to read it. I don't know if she ever read it, but I'm curious to know what she thought. So Tamara, if you're watching, let me know if you read this book and what you thought. But it's got like some black pages, it's got pages like this, and then it's got illustrations. So I'm not really sure what to call this. I'm not quite sure if it's a graphic novel or what, because it's kind of like, you can't even see the pages, hold on. There are pages with writing like in between all of this, but, and I'm not flipping to any of them. Anyways, so this book, I thought it was gonna be really creepy. It says a lonely girl in a new town, a ghostly figure in the window, a derelict old house, and a mystery spanning the decades. I like to read books that involve bullying because I, like most kids, I think at some point in life, were bullied. But depending on how bullying is handled in the book will depend on how I like it. And this book made me feel all kinds of depressed and all kinds of frustrated and all kinds of, it's good that it made me feel something, I will admit that. but. I did not like how this went. I did not like how it ended. It made me feel icky and I would never recommend this to anybody or read this ever again. I, I like, ugh. Like, 
I want to say things, but I'm like, somebody's going to get so mad at me for saying this. I know that this is good for somebody. I hesitantly say that, though. I just don't. I wouldn't recommend it, and I just, I, I can't say anything else. I'm getting rid of it. Okay, next I am going to unhaul Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. Um, I think this is a really pretty book, and the premise was interesting, but it, once again, it's a young adult fantasy, and I'm just really not that interested in picking this one up, and it's the first book in a series. I don't typically like to read series anymore um, unless they, I don't know, it just depends on what it is, but I'm just really not into young adult fantasy much anymore, so I'm going to unhaul this. This author has been supposedly not nice to some of her, like, readers or fans, and so I think part of that is making me hesitant to read her stuff too. Like, I just don't think I want to support that. And so I, I just don't know. Like, I'm kind of iffy on that. And that, like, once again, I just don't think I'm really interested in reading this anymore. So I'm going to unhaul Wicked Saints. I'm also going to be unhauling The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I just don't really think fairies are my thing. I haven't read a lot with fairies, but if I read anything, it's probably going to be young adult and it's not going to have them at the core. I know there's more to this series than that, but I just don't think, like, from what I know of what I like in books, I just don't know that I'm going to enjoy this. So, I finally got my hands on the first one, and I kept wanting, like, the whole set and the whole series, but I just don't think I'm going to get around to it. It's not top pro top priority. I'm going to say the same thing about all these books, so I might as well just go ahead and get through them, but yeah, I'm going to get rid of that one. And then I'm also going to get rid of, somebody's going to also get their feelings hurt because my feelings are just a little hurt. This is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and she is one of my favorite authors. I will say that she is. I love her City of Ghosts middle grade series. I love Vicious and Vengeful and I'm really excited about the extraordinary graphic novels or manga or whatever it is. Not manga but graphic novel or comics. That's what I meant to say that are coming out or have come out. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Like I'm, I'm really excited to read Adi LaRue. I've read some of it. I just didn't have a chance to finish it. But I'm not big on high fantasy and world building and detail. And I think she does that really well. But I started reading this and I just don't think this is what I'm interested in. So I know that lots of people love this, but I don't think this is for me. So I'm going to go ahead and unpaw that. Then I have a couple of middle grades. I have The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane and The Secret of White Sun Gate by Julia Noble. I read The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane with the middle grade book club that I host at my library. And it was fine. I thought it was good. And for a middle grade book, I gave it four stars. Um, and then this is the sequel to that. And in all honesty, with this first book, if you heard my review of it, I just wish there would have been more action. I felt like it was slow and drawn out. But I did enjoy the read of it. I just don't think I'll reread it. And I debated on whether or not I wanted to read The Secret of Whitestone Gate. And I just don't think that I do. Um, I think this leaves off kind of with still some questions. And this may not be the end of the series. But... I don't think Julia Noble has come out saying that she's going to release another book in the series anytime soon. And so I just, I don't want to wait. And I, I don't know. I just don't feel like I'll be as fulfilled reading these. So I think I can just go ahead and let this go. What I'm going to do with these two copies is probably take them to the library and use them. Um, sometimes I give away books for book club or um, use them towards summer reading or anything like that. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and donate these back to my library. Um, and give them away like as a set for something because I just don't think I'm as interested in them as I would like to be. Next, I have Lily and the Octopus by Stephen Rowley. I have not read this book yet, but I have a copy of it on my shelves up there. This was a copy that was sent to me by Book Outlet and it came in not great condition when it was supposed to. So they have always been really good about if I get a book and it's not in good condition about sending me one that is in good condition. Uh, and they did not want this one sent back to them. So I have an extra copy. So I'm going to be um, getting rid of this one as well, just because it's an extra copy. Then I have Stalking Jack the Ripper, which I think I may have unhauled before and just not taken away yet. Um, this is by Carrie Maniscalco. I started trying to read this and it's just not my cup of tea. Um, I'm not crazy about the writing. I'm not crazy about the analysis of I don't even remember what it was that I didn't like. Um, like the morgue stuff. I don't know. There's just something about this that I didn't like. I like the premise, but I didn't like it enough to even finish the book. I didn't like the audiobook either. I just was bored, and that doesn't mean this is a bad book. It just means it's not for me. So I'm going to be um, unhauling this one as well. Then I have from the mixed up files of Mrs. Be Basil E. Frankweiler by E.L. Konigsberg. 
I really didn't enjoy this book. It is a Newbery Medal um, Award winner, but I don't know. I like the premise of it. It didn't hold up for me, so I'm going to get rid of that one. And then I just hauled this book, but I've got to be real with myself. So this is book two of Maybird. Um, it's Maybird Among the Stars. The first book is Maybird and the Ever After. I want to read this and maybe someday I will. I don't have book one. I don't feel like I should have got book two. I just got it for a dollar um, from my library, from the library sale. But I just don't think I'm going to get to it anytime soon. And I'm not going to hold on to book two if I don't have book one. And I don't anticipate getting to it anytime soon. So, I might still read this in the future. But for now, it's going to go. Then I also have The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. Which I did enjoy and I believe I gave four stars. But I don't think I'm going to reread this. And it's not super memorable. Like, I remember enjoying the book. And I remember crying at the end of the book. <clears throat> but I don't think it's going to be something that I reread. I think it's just kind of a one and done. So I did like this, but I don't think I want to keep it on my shelves any longer. Then I have Suey and the Shadow by Ginger Lai or Ginger Lee and illustrated by Molly Park. This is a graphic novel that I enjoyed and was supposed to have another book in the series, but to my knowledge, it is not coming out anytime soon and I don't want to wait on it. And this one was like a three star read for me. So I think it was fine and I enjoyed the read, but I don't think I'll reread it and I probably won't pick up the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one as well. Then I have um, Two Steps Forward by Graham, Sim I think it's Graham. I'm not really quite sure how to say his name. Simpson and Ann Buist. This is from the author of The Rosie Project, which I haven't read, but I've heard good things about. And this book sounded really good, but... Once again, I'm ha I had to be really picky and I still have some books that I have on my shelves that I'm borderline like going to get rid of, but I want to see it. I want to read them and see what I think first and then get rid of them after. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this one is one that I got off of Book Outlet. It was cheaper. It sounded really good. And I don't know, maybe someday I'll read it when I get older. <laughs> um, but right now it's just not top priority. And I have just got to be real with myself because I know I'm going to keep getting more books throughout the years and I don't know you guys this is hard like I know I'm just going through this really quickly or I'm trying to anyways but it is really hard for me to take books off my shelves and just decide like I've wanted to read this for a couple years but I, I just need to get rid of it because I don't know like I need to get something that I'd rather read more because new books are coming out all the time and I have books on my shelves that I'm not wanting to read because there are new books coming out so it's just a struggle and I'm just having to part ways with this one but it does sound really good I just, I, I, I'm not going to read it anytime soon. Then I have Witchy by Ariel Slamet Reese, Rias, Rias. I'm not quite sure how to say that name. I'm sorry. But um, this is a graphic novel that looked really good. It came, I think, in an owl crate box, maybe. But I just didn't really like it. I read a little bit of it and I just didn't care for it. Um, it's not my style. Um, I don't know. I just don't think, I, I don't know. There's something about it. I just didn't like it. I just didn't really care to finish it. A personal thing i typically like witchy books and this is called witchy so um yeah i don't know i'm gonna get rid of this one because i just wasn't my cup of tea and i also have the modern fairy tales by holly black so this is a compilation of ty the valiant and ironside once again i don't think i like the fairy thing um and i don't think i realized that this was three books in one when i bought it and it's really thick and i just i don't know i'm just i Ugh, I hate unhauling these books because like I don't want people to think like no we don't unhaul that it's so good but I just don't think this is my cup of tea I don't think it's what I'm interested in for those of you who are wondering I like middle grade fantasies middle grade spooky books mysteries thrillers and sometimes romance and sometimes historical fiction but like I'm veering away from like young adult fantasy so getting rid of that I'm also going to get rid of a thousand beginnings and endings by this is edited by Ellen O and Elsie Chapman this is a compilation of different authors that did 15 retellings of Asian myths and legends and I did read maybe half of this and I thought it was really interesting but I just don't think it's something that I want to keep um I don't think it's something I'll come back to but I do think it was really neat to learn about some of the Asian myths and legends but I just don't feel like I don't know just this is again kind of like young adult fantasy and so oh there's a bookmark in there I don't want to get rid of so I'm glad I saw that a little cat and hat bookmark he's reading it's magnetic it's adorable anyways okay so we're gonna put that to the side um but I just don't yeah I, I, I'm not vibing with this stuff anymore so I'm gonna get rid of that and then 
now my books are falling everywhere. I have Wink Poppy Midnight, A Hero, A Villain, A Liar, Who's Who by April Genevieve Tuchalk. Um, It's short. I probably could read it, but I just don't, I don't want to waste my time. Like, I think it's good. Um, or I don't think, it's, I'm not that I think it's good. I haven't read it, but it says every story needs a hero. Every story needs a villain. Every story needs a secret. Wink Poppy Midnight. Two girls, one boy, one summer, one bad thing. What really happened? Someone knows. Someone is lying. I love synopses that have like, that are short like that and make you wonder. But this just, ugh, it's not like it would waste my time because I might enjoy it. But at the same time, there are so many books that I'd rather read more. So there's no easy way to do this on haul. I'm getting rid of it. Okay, then I have Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I have wanted to read this since I first saw whoever it was that talked about it on BookTube. And it was either... Hannah from The Clockwork Reader or Haley from Haley and Bookland, one of those two. Um, and I have been Hannah that I saw talk about this because those were the girls I watched when I first started watching BookTube. And I don't know. I just don't feel like it. I'm sure it's good, but I don't feel like it's going to be something I'll enjoy anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that. All of these are going to sound so repetitive, so I'm sorry. Um, okay, so more Victoria Schwab books. Once again, I feel terrible because I love Victoria Schwab. I just don't like these particular books. So. Just because you love an author does not mean you have to love all of their work, but I still appreciate her. I love her writing. I just don't like these stories. So, This Savage Song is the first book and then Our Dark Duet. This is a duology. I started This Savage Song and I got like halfway or three-fourths of the way through and I just wasn't interested in the story. Um, I just don't think it's my kind of story. I liked the writing fine. I still love Victoria Schwab. I just don't think these are my cup of tea. So, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those as well. Also, I forgot to mention, not only, like, this is, well, it's not technically signed, but it's got a signed book plate, plate in Eliza and her monsters. Some of these are signed, which that really bothers me to get rid of because I like having signed books, but, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, next I have Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. I read both of these. I think I gave them three or four stars. I'm not really sure. Trisha Levenseller has a really, like, lyrical and quick writing style, and I was, I, I don't know. This is hard for me. I don't think I'm ever going to read these again. I don't think I like, this has like pirates and mermaids and stuff like that. And I don't think I like that in books. I'm not quite sure I like Vikings either, which I feel like that's a very popular thing. Most people like that stuff in books, but I don't think I do. So I don't know. Um, I did not think these were bad books. A lot of people enjoy these books, but I don't think they're books I'll ever read again. And I think I might have been kind of in a slumpy mood when I read these, and so that might have affected my reading of them, but I rated them both like three or four stars. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the first one was at least four stars. Um, they were really good. I would recommend them, but I just don't want to keep them. Okay, then I have Lovely War by Julie Berry, which I did not finish, and I think, yep, still got a bookmark in there too. I need to check these books for bookmarks because I'm going to end up getting rid of like bookmarks, and I made that, so... My goodness. Okay. Anyways, so I tried to read Lovely War with Brie and Liv and none of us finished it, which is crazy because if you know Brie from Call Me After Coffee, she loves um, like historical fiction, but this was just, this is different. And I like the premise. I liked the story. The writing was fine, but I feel, I don't know. I felt like there was too much going on. And there were things about it that I didn't like. I can't really quite pinpoint why I didn't like this. Um, I don't read a lot of historical fiction, but at the same time, I don't I don't think the fact that it was historical fiction was what my problem was. I'm not really sure. I am sad that I didn't like this because so many people have rated it five stars and raved about it, but it just was not my cup of tea. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul that one as well. Then I have Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this one too. Crown of Feathers by Nikki Powell Preto. These are both books that I saw at the beginning. Once again, uh, when I started watching BookTube, I saw other people talking about them. It was like, hey, you know, sure, why not? Let's pick it up. This is like an evil queen retelling, like an Asian retelling, I believe, of it. And then I don't know what Crown of Feathers is about at this point anymore. Um, I'm just, once again, it's an epic fantasy. I don't like epic fantasy, especially. Too much world building. I, I can appreciate it all day, but I just cannot consume it. I just can't, so... I'm sure these are great books, but I've got to get rid of books. So there they go. Okay, somebody is about to get real upset with me about these, I'm sure, because these are all like really new. Um, let me just go ahead and tell you, sorry, I'm probably not in frame, but while I'm grabbing all these, I tried out Owl Crate and 
I mostly wanted the stuff, but they do a lot of young adult fantasy. And I have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months of Alcrate, and I think I don't want to do Alcrate anymore. Um, they're great if you have not done Alcrate. Alcrate, I would recommend them, but I don't. I'm not gonna read any of these. I'm just not. So I am keeping of all the months that I did Alcrate. Lore by Alexandra Bracken and Legendborn, and I can't remember who the author of that one is, and I can't see it from here, but I am going to keep those two books. And these, some of these books sound interesting, but I just don't think I'm going to read them, so let's just get started. We have Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova. All of these are Alcrate exclusive editions. A lot of these, this one doesn't, but a lot of these have, like, art under the dust jacket. They're all signed. If anybody, I'm hesitant to say this, but... I guess, like, if you're interested in these, let me know. I'm not going to guarantee you that I'll mail it to you, but if you would be willing to pay for this and pay shipping, we can talk about it. And I may mail these because I know that McKay's is not going to give me, like, anything extra for these being special editions, and I would prefer to get a little bit more for them. Not, like, a ton more. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to ask for, like, $30 for this book or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not like that, but I don't know, I, and I want shipping. But if you're in the United States... And are interested in any of these i guess let me know and we'll see if i if we've talked before i'm probably more likely to i don't know i'm weird i'm really weird about like giving out addresses and stuff online to people i don't know which i think i think everybody understands that so we'll see um i don't want to like make any promises but if you're interested you can let me know um then i have where dreams to send by janelle angeles um all of these are really pretty which makes me want to keep every single one of them but i'm not big on i think this is like a um Phantom of the Opera retelling, maybe, with some magician stuff. I don't like the way that it's written. I think I read a few pages of it, and I was just like, I don't think I'm going to like this. But you've got, like, the star. It's, like, written like a play. Um, kind of? I don't know. Maybe it's not. Hold on. It's, like, act one, and then it goes into it. It's not, like, a script or anything like that, but it's just, I don't know. I'm not sure that I like that, so... I'm being very chit-chatty about books, but, I mean, it's all the same. <laughs> um, then I have Star Daughter by Shveta Th Thakrar. This one is also very, very beautiful, and um, I did kind of want to try this one out. It's got purple sprayed edges, but I don't know. Like, I just don't think I'm ever going to get around to it, and I feel like somebody else would enjoy it more than I would. I can't just keep books because they're pretty as much as I want to. I just can't do it. Um, then I have Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson. Johnson, yeah. This one also, this, is, this has like glittery gold sprayed edges. These are just so pretty. They're so hard to get rid of, but, and this one sounds interesting too, but I just, I don't think I'm going to read it. And then I have Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston, which kind of gives me the Hazelwood vibes, and I did like the Hazelwood. It has pretty sprayed edges too. This is really hard. Like, I just want to keep these books because they're pretty, and I might read them, but I can't do that because there's books I want to read more. And I need room on, room on my shelves, and I still don't have room, even though I've taken all these off. Um, oh, I also kept Torrid by Katrina Leno. I forgot. That's not over there, but I read that, and that was an outcrate book. Sorry. Scatterbrain, but some of these have, like, the art under the cover. I really am tempted to keep this one, but honestly, I've not heard anybody talk about this, so I'm not going to keep it. And then I have um, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I think this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Yeah, Shakespeare. I don't, I'm not a big Shakespeare person. Um, it's set, like, it's Asian retelling, I believe. So, this is a green cover. I don't know if you can tell. It's, like, a really dark green, and I think it's really, really pretty. And there's also art under the dust jacket here as well. And this, oh, I just want to keep all the pretty books, but I can't. I just can't. Um, gosh, I don't want to sound whiny. Sorry, guys, but you know how it is. I want to keep the pretty books, but i be hard on myself. So, um, if you're interested in any of these Alcrate editions and we've spoken before or I don't know, even if not, maybe you, you can try. I don't want to be like, I'm hesitant to say that. Like I said, I'm just weird about giving out addresses and stuff, but if you are willing to pay for these and I'm not really sure how much I want to charge them and look into it, um, and pay for shipping, then I will ship them to you because I just don't think I'm going to get what they're worth from McKay's because even though they're special editions and signed and pretty, gonna be the same amount of money um I have books on my shelves too I'll go ahead I don't know if you guys can see them but there are some that I'm not sure that I'm interested in but I've kept them because I want to try them before I get rid of them 
da the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I don't know. I've kind of lost interest in that, but I still want to try it before I get rid of it. Um, the Betrothed by Kira Cass. I know has like two stars on Goodreads. This is a really pretty book though, but I'm going to try it, but I'm probably going to get rid of it because I, I don't think anybody's had anything good to say about that. I love the selection, but apparently this is not, not good. Um, I've also got, I hope you guys can hear me with me turning a shadow bright and burning and a poison dark and drowning that I'm kind of on the fence about, but my husband picked these out for me. Like he was like, I thought these sounded good and like something you want to read. So it wasn't like I told him I wanted this book. He saw it and thought I would like it. So I want to try the first book before I get rid of them. Um, what else do I have back there? Can't see all of my books. I've also got Carval and Legendary, which I don't know. I might like them, but we'll keep them just to see. Um, Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares I'll probably like. I've just had these on my shelves for so long. Um, Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. I read the Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Don't come up, come at me, but I did not like it. So, I'm not watching the show. I didn't like the books. It's just not my cup of tea. But you guys know I don't like epic fantasy and world building that much. I mean, I do, but not like the way that it's done in epic fantasy. That probably makes no sense. Maybe somebody out there is like me and understands where I'm coming from. But, um, I also have some books up. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I'm borderline wanting to get rid of some Christina Lauren books, but I'm going to read them first. Um... I still read some, like, romances, but I'm getting more picky about what I read, which is really weird, but there's a lot of books. We're not going to go through them. We're not going to go through anymore, but there are a lot of books. The only books I don't want to get rid of are my middle grade, which I don't know if you guys can see, like, all of those. But anyways, so, um, that's all the books that I'm going to unhaul. Like I said, most of these are going to go to McKay's for store credit so I can get more books and my plan right now is to not get very many more books if I go I'm probably going to get like the rest of this series of unfortunate events so I can start reading those because I'm missing random books like I have books one two three four five seven and nine of the 13 so I need six eight ten eleven twelve thirteen so I need to get those and I don't know who knows what else I'll get we don't know. Um, I've gotten to where I'm buying books that I've already read because I want to reread them or I want to own them and they'll go on my other shelf and make me feel like I'm reading more books like on my red shelf in the other room versus the TBR shelf. That is way too large. But anyways, let me know if you think I should keep any of these books. I'm going to be honest and say I probably won't just because I've lost interest um, and I don't really need my interest peaked again. But I want to know. Like still let me know what you think about them. But I just... I've got to get rid of some books, you guys. I've got like over 500 books on my Goodreads TBR of books that I want to read. And that's just going to steadily grow as more books come out. So I've got to be more picky about what I read. And this is just kind of um, a result of that. So let me know in the comments if you've read any of these, what you thought about them, if you think I should keep any of them, if any of these broke your heart, if you felt similarly to me about any of these books, if you read them and didn't like them and you think I'm making a good choice. I don't know. Just let me know your thoughts in the comments. But Thank you for watching this video. It's probably a wild and crazy mess. I cannot remember the last time I did a book on haul, but it was probably more organized than this. Um, most of this was just me trying to get rid of some books and make room on my shelves, which I did, but then I added more books, so it doesn't look much better. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos from me, you can hit subscribe and the bell to get notifications anytime I post a new video. Thanks again so, so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!